Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you please invite your friends and share the link and don't forget to download the video as soon as we finish uh, <clears throat> you know always I look at the Muslim comments and uh, the Muslims they bring they bring humiliation for their prophet this is a person his name the truth with the proof hmm yeah I mean a prophet who came 600 years after Jesus he have no witnesses he went to the moon he have no witnesses he went to the sky came to the sky he went to Jerusalem there is no witnesses he saw Jerusalem there is no witnesses he make miracles there is no witnesses and yet the Muslim he says proof I like it when a Muslim he say proof. I wonder what proof he is talking about. So in this comment here, <coughs> we see this Muhammad and saying the following. And if your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out. It's better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell. Mark 9 he said I am searching for eyes in the street of America why I don't see any uh, am I blind crockpot I am a sinner should I use this or that <laughs> you know here uh, uh, you will see how he brought him humiliation to his prophet here we see how much noble the Messiah is. He's not saying take your eye out. He's saying the excuse you use is your excuse. You create your own excuse. So get rid of your excuses. It's not acceptable because at the end of the day, you can say all the excuses you want. Still, you are going to go to hell unless you get rid of your excuse. So oh, my eyes, I see women who I see beautiful women, I see etc. So I cannot. So the Messiah is not saying take your eyes. Did the Messiah take any one eye during his time? No, he did not. So here you see how silly and how low the way the Muslims they knew that this is not what went. But as long as you thought about this, I want to ask you, I did not, I walk in America too. I did not see any Muslim without hands or fingers or feet. But yet, number one. People who they are in jail in USA and in Europe are Muslims. So why you Muslim don't do that then? Isn't it the Quran says the one who still cut his hand? Isn't it your prophet he put nails in the eyes of the one who wage war against Allah? Including theft? Isn't it your Quran says he crucified them, cut their hands, cut their feet? I walk in America, I saw Muslim wearing short skirt. Actually, prostitution is very good business in Europe. And you know who is the one is doing it. Scam and etc. But we don't see any of you Muslims are practicing just Sharia law. So here Jesus, he was not practicing Sharia. He was advising us that if our eye will mislead us, then get rid of your eye. Which means don't use excuses. But here, as long as you mention this, look how noble the Messiah is, and look how trashy your prophet is. In the time of Jesus, a woman she committed adultery. The Jews, who they are very much the same as Muslims today, they are very harsh and they are unfair, and they like to judge, playing gods as if they are the good ones and they wanted to stone the women read with me carefully <clears throat> oh i forgot you do not know how to read do you john 8 jesus went unto the mount of olives and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, 
This woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground, and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Then and sin no more. Here you see how the Muslim they play that they are the good ones. But the fact they are very much similar to the Jews. Hypocrisy is their guideline. Their prophet is number one adulterous, thief, criminal, rapist, and yet they speak about ah oh, okay, Jesus said if your eyes tremble, you pluck it out. I walk in America, I did not see Christians without eyes. But when we walk in America, we don't see Muslims without hands. And we don't see Muslims are being stoned, but night clubs are full of them. And we don't see Muslims are taken to jail for wearing a short or bikini. Because you Muslims are really hypocrite. But I want to remind you of something. As long as you are the person saying, uh, I'm not going to enter because I saw your comment you have in the comment there saying am I going to enter heaven with one eye so if I take one eye I have a question for you what about if you your prophet he uh, take your eye by nails as he did to many are they going to enter heaven with the one eye what about your prophet cutting hands are they going to enter heaven with one hand what about your prophet cutting feet? Are they going to enter heaven with one feet? I mean, this is how silly they are. But I want to show you here something about Islam. Islam promote adultery, encourage adultery. Islam is the religion of adultery. Actually, Muhammad taught Muslims that your adultery is not yours. It is Allah decision. Allah, he made you. He gave you a partition of adultery. Muhammad said, Verily, Allah has fixed the very portion of adultery which a man should do, as you see in the front of you on the screen. So, Muhammad claimed that adultery of an eye is Allah's decision. Allah, He made you do adultery of the eye. Adultery of the tongue, like whatever, you know, kissing, whatever. Or even a speech adultery of the heart all those adulteries are from Allah Allah he wrote for you affixed the very portion of adultery which a man he should do so the first adulteress is Allah so while Jesus was saying if your eye is going to mislead you take it away and for sure he don't make it literally because it's not really the eye. Still, if you are blind, you can commit sin. Muhammad was saying to the Muslims, your adultery, it was given to you by Allah and you have to do it. It is a must. And then we see Muhammad, he go to his own son wife when she was alone. And this is Tafsir al Qurtubi, <clears throat> Al Jamir Uli Ahkam al Quran, volume number 14, page number 171, page number 172, page number 173. <clears throat> Muhammad he went to his own son, wife, 
when she is alone and he saw her way you know wearing sexy clothes let us say almost naked the man is coming to his own son house and the Muslim they will say to you son by adopter by, by adoption that does not change anything if I go to my friend house I will never look at his wife so how about my son the one I claim that he became my son and even I gave him my last name Muhammad he went there and he said he saw her فأبصر زينب قائمة كانت بيضاء جميلة جسيمة من أتم نساء قريش فهويها وقال سبحان الله مقلب القلوب <coughs> Translation He saw Zainab standing and she was very white and fat and by the way here the word fat uh, because in the old days the Arab they like excuse my language I'm not making fun but this is what they like they like big women who they are heavy so that the heavy you are the more beautiful you are so she was very white and fat and from the most beautiful women of Quraysh Fahawiha, so he fell in love with her and he said flirting with her subhanallah so and Zainab she heard what he said praising Allah for her beauty so she told her husband imagine the guy is going to his own son flirting with the wife when she is married when the husband is not home you know not big bond there's nothing it's called big bond you know I'm, I know what I'm talking about are, we, are you going to teach me Arabic Roger this is what it is in Arabic, we have a song. It's uh, uh, about a, a woman. She is so beautiful to the point the camel could not carry her. Why she is so? Why she is so beautiful? Because the camel could not carry her. So she was very, very, very fat. So the more fat you are, the more you are healthy at that time and more beautiful. That's mean you will give healthy kids and you are good. The more skinny you are, the more not thick. Guys, don't give me names. Don't give me names. You don't like it? Just leave. It's talking about being a being a fat, thick. She came with a different definition now. Those guys are going to teach me what the, what the word in Arabic there. I'm unbelievable. Look, thick CP. It's a thick, uh, big and beautiful. <laughs> All those just just because you don't want to say the word fat. It's fat. What's wrong with you? You don't like the word fat? Leave. So she is a huge. And she is fat and she is white and that make her make her or made her the most beautiful woman in the whole tribe of Quraysh now maybe Christian Prince is lying let us see take it to Google translation we will see what Google will say hmm. all right <clears throat> let us see so he saw her standing the translation here is not good and she was a beautiful beautiful repeated twice this is about being you know fat white she is the most white woman in the tribe of Quraysh and then he says praising her that his heart is melting for her and then Zainab she heard his praise and she mentioned it to Zaid and now Zaid right away he went to Muhammad and he said you know what I don't want this woman he knew already already uh, Zaid is not stupid he knew that already they are sleeping together but they want to tell him you know okay it's time for you to go it's time for you to go Muhammad is the one who married this woman to Zaid and obviously he is sleeping with her already So we are talking about a Muslim making fun of Jesus saying if your eye will mislead you will take you to hell take it off making fun of that and you Muslim you say we don't see anyone taking his eye off but you're a prophet going to the house of his own son 
and with his own eyes he looked at her and not only that he flirted with the married women and not only that Allah he made a verse for him says go and take her she is yours shame on you so based on teaching of Jesus this man Muhammad should take his two eyes off and should based on the teaching of Jesus your God Allah should take his eyes off too because Allah he made a verse saying to Muhammad take her huh? take her she's yours and the poor husband he decided to get rid of her because he knew already they are cheating him both of them they are cheating on him what kind of a woman and what kind of a father he go to the house when the man is not there why you even enter if you enter because you are the father then you broke the trust of being a father entering the house and then you flirt with the women and then you will see that Zainab she claim that after this each time Zaid he tried to have intercourse with her Allah he made his penis swell his private part swell is that true That is the truth, my friend. And you Muslims are trying to run away from it. All of those are interpretation for the verses, and all of them saying the same that Allah He made the private part of Zaid swell each time he tried to get close to the women. That is a miracle, my friend. The husband, he want to sleep with the women. And Allah, he made his private part. Swell. Hey, by the way, any Muslim here want to say this is a lie? Mm -hmm. Any Muslim will say that Allah did not make the penis of the man as well. Maybe you want to say I added this. Anyone? Because we can show it in the screen. Anyone? Actually, let's show it in the screen. So the Muhammadan, they will not say, we are making things up. Here we go. وَرُوِيَ فِي الْخَبَرِ أَنَّهُ أَمْسَى زَيْدٌ فَأَوَى إِلَى فِرَاشِهِ it's mentioned in the story that Zaid he went to his bed and Zainab she said he could not do it you know what I'm talking about and no one made him not to do it save Allah and then it says that Zainab she reported in some of the other stories and Zaid and Tawarra Madari Kaminu Hina Arad and Yakrubuha. That Zaid is a private part swell when he tried to get close to her. That is a miraculous of Allah. While Jesus saying, If your eye is deceiving you, unblock it, Allah is making the penis of the husband swell. But this is the husband. I mean, this guy is not committing adultery. This is the husband. This is the wife. He wanted to sleep with her. No, Allah will not let him because the prophet, he liked the women. Are you kidding me? So the Muhammadan is making fun about the Messiah being high, noble, beautiful in his teaching. While his prophet is nothing but adulterous, 
cheater and cheating even his own son but as long you mention cutting hands or unblocking eyes I want to ask you when you said to me in your uh, comment let us go back to the comment I like your comment by the way I, I want you to keep them always there Uh, where he said anyway he like he said how are we going to enter heaven with uh, with one eye so based on your uh, uh, question I'm going to ask you this Muslim here is going to enter heaven with what This is a story about a thief. And by the way, a Muslim thief still he will enter heaven. Not only that, a Muslim adulteress still he will enter heaven. If we go actually in the hadith, we will find the following. The Prophet of Allah confirmed that a person a Muslim as long as he is a Muslim he will go to heaven regardless if he is adulterous or is a thief read carefully with me I came to the Prophet of Allah blah 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 okay and then he asked him a question Muhammad he said none nobody says none has the right to be worshipped but Allah and then later he dies while believing in that except that he will enter paradise so anyone who says shahada he will go to paradise this Muhammad saying I said even if I had if he had committed illegal sexual intercourse and a theft he said even if he had committed illegal sexual intercourse and a theft so just say shahada Say shahada, and then the guy repeated again, and he said, "Even if you committed illegal sexual, and by the way, you have to repeat three, three times, three times as usual." Okay, so what we learn from this: you commit illegal sexual curse, uh, or course, or you are a thief, still you go to heaven. So now I have a story for you about a person who went, who was going to go to heaven based on what you said. He's a thief. He, you know, they cut his hands. But the story here is uh, ridiculous, as Islam is. A thief was brought to the Prophet. He said, kill him. And here you see that Muhammad, he is playing God. The Muslim here, they want to show you that Muhammad, he knew the unseen. He's Allah. He's God on earth. He said, kill him. The people said, but he has committed a theft. And the punishment for theft in Islam is not, is not death. A messenger of Allah said, okay, cut off his hand. So the guy, the guy now, they cut off his right hand. So his right hand was cut off. He was brought a second time. And he said, which means he commit theft again. And I wonder, Muhammad, how come he keep all his hands? He is the biggest thief. Even the Muslims accuse him of stealing underwear. So he was brought a second time and he said, kill him. The people said he has committed a theft. Messenger of Allah. Then he said, okay, cut off his foot. So his left foot is cut off. So now what we have, let us let us, uh, let us us draw the person in the side to make the story more, uh, more clear. So this is uh, Abdul. Let us make the pen more thick. Okay, this is Abdul. And he have, like every human being, one hand in the right, one hand in the left, one foot in the right, one foot in the left. 
the prophet said when he they brought him over he said cut his right hand cut what his right hand okay this is his right hand is gone then they brought him again he said cut off his left foot okay this is his left foot is gone then the prophet they brought him again the guy they brought him again the prophet said okay cut off his hand now this is the left hand was cut off okay his left hand is gone all right then they brought him again for the fourth time are you there with me okay so the prophet says cut off his right foot okay so his right foot is gone and then they brought him for the fifth time fifth time how the guy he commit theft this is the most stupid religion ever the guy he have no more arms no more feet how he committed the theft for the first time and now abdul as long you said to me so the one who take his eye off because he committed sin is he going to enter heaven with one eye i want to say to you the same brother is this guy going to go to heaven brother with no hands and no feet and brother as long as you Muslims, you say stories which is absolutely truthful about the Prophet. Who is the stupid in the world when I believe that the guy, he have no arms left and no feet left, still he is committing theft? Who is the stupid who made this story? How he was able to steal no hands no feet what is left even James Bond movies did not come with this and here you notice that Islam is a stupid cult and whatever the people they say whatever they say about the Prophet they want to teach you here that the Prophet he knew the future which is against Islam and the Quran says that the Prophet did not know the future Muhammad in the Quran says, if I know the future, I will take the good part of it because this is how he think about the future. He would take the, you know, he will take advantage of it. The only one who knew the future in the Quran is Jesus. He told them, I know, I can tell you what you hide in your houses. In, in chapter 6, verse number 50 in the Quran, We find Muhammad saying the following. <clears throat> Say. Tell them, I tell you not, with me are the treasure of Allah, nor I do know what is hiding. He did not know what he's hiding. So how he keeps saying to them, kill him, kill him, kill him, which means he knew he will keep committing theft until at the end. And by the way, according to watch law in Islam, if you commit you know, like you have to kill him. Why you have to kill him?
so Muhammad he says I know nothing about the future but yet the hadith give us different story that Muhammad he knew that this guy he will keep committing theft Additional to that, I don't want to forget to mention that in Islam, the only adultery is you having four witnesses. I don't want to be rude in the way you say, I say it, but you have to bring four witnesses and they have to see the private part of the man getting inside the private part of the women. And you have to bring four witnesses see his private part coming in and out which means it's impossible to prove adultery if you cover yourself with the women under a blanket or she is wearing a skirt and you know whatever and the husband came and he see her there's no proof actually if he accused his wife for seeing her with the man Islam says he will be lashed. Muhammad will whip his back. Because he have to bring four witnesses. And the four witnesses they have to see as we say the private part and Muhammad he says kama yaridu al-qalam fi al the same as the pen go in the ink well you know the old days when they put it in the ink so you have to bring four witnesses in order to prove adultery and they have to see not only the women and the man actually there's a story where a guy he said to the prophet or to the caliphate I saw her legs around his neck around his head like an ear of a donkey I mean, you can imagine what's happening, right? Because there was only three witnesses for that adultery, the caliphate, he whipped their back, three of them, because they need to bring one more. And not only that, they did not see the thing getting in and out. So it's impossible to prove adultery in Islam. And if you see your wife having sex with the man in the bedroom, and even if you see the private part getting in and out, as long you don't have four witnesses seeing that with you you have no adultery and you cannot even accuse your wife with it in the top of that let us say you go inside your bedroom and you see your wife having sex with a, a strange guy what do you do you ask the guy to stay until you call three more witnesses hold on hold on stay there stay there keep going keep going please hello brother muhammad I have my wife here. She is committing adultery. Yes, he is here. She is naked with him and doing boom boom. I please bring three witnesses with you, brother. A brother, and be sure none of them is blind and they have good vision. What a stupid cult. So the Muslim is making fun of the teaching of Jesus, which is very noble. It's the same as Jesus said look at the big tree in your eye before you let look at the little thing in the eye of somebody else the most corrupt the most false the most indecent religion You're a prophet. He encouraged men and women to have sexual intercourse without marriage. To the point he said, any man, any women, they like to live together for three days or three nights. And look, the Muslims here, the added words is not in the story. The word marriage is not there. The word marry is not there. The word temporarily is not there. What in Arabic it says, which means live together. 
Allah also said if a man and a woman agree to live together for the three days or three night if they like to continue they can do so and if they want to separate they can do so <laughs> while Jesus saying if your eye is going to mislead you to go to hell black it out Muhammad was saying go and find the women and have fun for three days and three nights not only that even the Muslims they went farther and they consider renting women is very legal by the eyes and the teaching of Allah you can rent a woman legally officially this is al islam.org this is not a Christian prince read with me carefully first of all here by the way they are saying it clearly as I always say the Muslim they say that the word nikah does not mean sexual intercourse in fact in this website they say it is nothing but sexual intercourse nikah it is not marriage If we read together, <clears throat> let us see, hold on. Where they give definition for the word nikah. Hmm. Okay, let us see. I'm not sure if this is in the same page. Uh, yeah, maybe different different page. I, I will look for. It. But anyway, you will see here they say clearly that in Islam you can rent a woman. Read carefully. In some work, special term applied to women who participate participate in the muta, muta in Arabic, which means joy, and this is about sexual joy. Musta'jara, or in English, rented women, rented women. While Jesus is saying, if your eye will mislead you, take it off. Your God is saying you can rent a woman, a Muslim woman with burqa. Muta is considered a kind of rental because in general a man basic aim in this kind of marriage the correct marriage you believe it is sexual enjoyment a woman of a woman and in return of this enjoyment the women receive certain amount of money or a property do you see it this is your religion and you are making fun of Jesus teaching us how to be decent you are making fun of a Christ saying to the Christians if your eye mislead you you better take it off and you don't see the disaster in your religion so being holy and being decent for your teaching of Jesus being decent let us say, let us say you are trying to make fun of the Christians, huh? Okay, but still you cannot make fun of teaching of Jesus, you idiot. Here you are making fun of who? When your God says you can rent your mother, your mother, she can rent herself. If your mother now, she is not married, she can rent herself twice or three times a week. I mean, you are really lucky. You got extra income. Your daughter, she can rent herself. 
So they always school you about uh, we Muslims, our women is covered by burqa. We protect our women. You are right. Women in Islam is the last one to protect it. You cover them by burqa because they are your property, not because you are protecting them. Even your prophet, he said, if a woman she is divorced three times, she cannot go back to her husband unless she have sex with the new man. What is the protection? He made divorce a joke to the point you can divorce your wife by saying a word. Because there is no marriage in Islam. It's a sexual contract. And the woman she get paid, she is rented. And he can, the man, he can dissolve the rental agreement anytime he wish. He can hire you after five minutes from sleeping with you, says that you go. I don't want you no more. And that's it. So what Islam teach is totally not 180 degree from Jesus teaching is 1 billion degree from Jesus teaching. Islam is a devilish satanic cult. Promote open sexuality, even in the heaven of Allah. You are nothing but a sex maniac. And this is why we see how much Muhammad, he concentrated in misguiding you and taking you in the sexual fantasy world. To the point, he claimed that in the heaven there is a market. And in this market, there's nothing to sell or to buy except images of men and women and if you like it i mean the image you jump in it and you have sex with it let us see the hadith indeed Indeed, in the heaven, there is a market, a bazaar. And in this bazaar, there is no buying nor selling except images of men and women. Why Jesus saying, in the heaven we will be the same as angels, Muhammad, he was opening a Playboy magazine mall. The biggest mall ever in history. Billions of Muslims will be there shopping. Only Muslim men. The customers, only men. Whenever a man desires an image, he enter it. But what is the employee there? Who are they, those who they will sleep with them? Look what Muhammad said. In this market, there's no buying nor selling except for images of men and women so in heaven you will have sex with men and women actually we have a video about description of paradise or let us say well muslim he called me to speak about paradise we have a moroccan guy we have a, a two more two moroccan we have a guy from uh, 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 from iraq we have a guy go and watch their videos and they were shouting at me and says in heaven there is no sin and i said so you can have sex with your mother he said yes so what even we said to them, you can have sex with your prophet. He said, so, yes, well, so what? So they are making fun of Jesus for his noble teaching. But they don't see anything wrong. In the mad cult, sexual cult, it's called Islam. Everything in this cult is about sex. It's a pure sex religion. No God is there. And those who believe in it, they are not seeking God. They are seeking sex. If you like to learn more about this cult, you can read my books. This is my last volume, two volumes, Sex and Allah. And yet the Muhammadan is making fun of the teaching of Christ. Can you believe it?
in the Middle East all houses has bars in the windows is that because this is a land of security no because if you leave your window without a bar your house will be gone in five minutes women they cannot walk alone in the street because if you leave your sister or your mother walking in the street alone 99.999 percent she will be molested she will be harassed if she is not raped because Islam fail to make out of you a good person a woman in Saudi Arabia if she walk alone in the street the police will arrest her because she need a guardian Ask yourself, what kind of society a woman she need a guardian? What's wrong with this society? If you all Muslims and you believe in Allah and you pray five times, everybody there in Saudi Arabia pray five times. So why if a woman walk alone, she have a problem? Big problem. Because Islam made you live and die for sex. In America, my friend, if you say some words to a woman and the women she reported you to the police they will publish your name by the police and you will be exposed wherever you go even if you move your house the police they will move the information about you to the new city which means this is will trace you to wherever you go Not to mention, if your prophet come to America and he have his beautiful wife, Aisha, at the age of six with him, he will be arrested immediately. And he will be listed as uh, the holy prophet who is uh, holy. So what are you talking about? Making fun of Jesus saying if your eye mislead you take it away And you walk in America you did not see Christians taking their eyes away I did not see you Muslims. Where is Muslims practicing Sharia law which country? Hmm? In whole Islamic world We have only Saudi Arabia and Taliban That's it in Egypt, no Sharia law. In Morocco, no Sharia law. In Jordan, no Sharia law. In Iraq, no Sharia law. In Syria, no Sharia law. In Turkey, Erdogan, he give us a speech every day about Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah. But Turkey is full of nightclubs. Actually, the Mufti of Turkey, he said, answering somebody, because he said to Erdogan, you speak too much about Islam, but night clubs are open everywhere. So the Mufti answered. He said, the, the, the night clubs is the one paying your salary. That is the truth. So I just wanted to answer this, Abdul. And at the same time, I wanted to say to those who they are in the, Indonesia and uh, India and in uh, Philippine, good morning. <laughs> Sorry if I say it late, but I wanted to answer this Abdul, who is very silly and stupid. And you know, I encourage always the Muslims to be silly, because that will help us to get a topic. You, you know, you inspire me, Muslims. Honestly, everything I do is inspired by the Muhammadan. When I wrote my book, first one, do you know why I wrote it? A Muslim, he says to me, as long as you know so much, how come we never heard that you have any book? Do you have any book? So I said, okay, we will make a book. A Muslim, he says, so if you are a brave and you are etc., why you don't come to Pal Talk? I said, okay, I will come to Pal Talk. A Muslim is the one, is the reason for me actually to come to YouTube. 
everything I did fighting this cult it was by the help of Muslims Do you believe it or not? Now I want to remind you, uh, this video will not stay long, so take it, take it, to download it right away. Uh, I want to remind you that today at 12 p.m. today, I will be live with the brother Al Fadi, who is an ex-Muslim from Saudi Arabia, and the brother David Wood, and the brother Sam Shamoon, live at 12 p.m. Uh, now I will not stay for long with them. Uh, and actually this is was my request because already they are I mean three and I am number four I mean what I would do there so I, I agreed to stay with them for maybe half hour and that's it and for you who want to stay continue with them you can watch so today at 12 p.m. New York time we will be live on air again New York time remember you can search like 12 12 p.m. New York time usually I go 3 30 p.m. every day right so it's going to be three hours and a half before that time to make it easier for you. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I, I hope it's going to be good. And, you know, for me, I don't mind to join any brothers who they are doing uh, the good work. Uh, you know, all of us, we have different ways in our fight uh, for the truth. But you know sometimes we complete our each other everyone is different you know the Lord he made us different and we are a delicious fruits in his table so always support those who fight for the truth it doesn't matter really who they are and I don't have to agree with everybody in what they say or what they do and they don't have to agree with me but let us compete for best for better let us compete about who can serve the Lord a nice competition a beautiful competition not about me or you it's about who and what we did for the Lord so time will come and all of us we will be uh, you know we will face the Lord and okay what we did in our life we spend the day watching TV working etc but okay did you know, all your life you did not save one person you did not just to bring one person to close to Christ so what you did all your life so I encourage all of us to, to, to join in, in this fight for the truth. And our fight is peaceful. We don't want to be violence, and we don't believe in violence. Violence is act of the devil. You see, it is lawful for you to defend yourself, absolutely. A Christian who don't defend his family and his country and himself is a coward. But this is not what we are talking about. Harming people because of their religion or belief or their gender or etc., that is evil. Harming people because you discriminate them. That is evil. So we as a Christian, we should defend the weak when we are strong. And we should not take the side of the devil or the strong because he is strong. And actually, this is what Muslims do always. They side with the strong. When America is strong, we side with America. When Hitler was strong, the Muslims decide with Hitler. Russia now is getting bigger and bigger. The Muslims start siding with Russia already. And the kings, one after one, gazing and worshipping Putin, asking him for mercy, protect us. They always side with the strong, not with the good one. Not because they are good or, you know, it's just the strong. Muhammad, he came, he became strong, they converted to Islam. Not because he's right. But because he was a criminal and this is why when Muhammad he died Muslims they left Islam by tens of thousands al Qaradawi was which is the head of the Muslim Brotherhood he said if not the war of upper state Islam is gone long time ago long time ago it is terrorism what is keeping Islam until now. Take the violence away, people will leave Islam by millions. And we are working in, on it. And already a lot, a lot of Muslims are leaving Islam. Imagine those who watch my video responding to this idiot from Indonesia. How many Indonesian Muslims will be so disappointed 
and how many of they will leave Islam because of that video they are leaving we are strong because the truth is with us not because we are terrorists or violent they are weak and this is why they are violent violent is a sign of weakness because you cannot answer you cannot refute so you use violence in order to shut up the person is talking but that will not work it didn't work before it's not going to work now and will not work even in the future the truth is stay truth and lies stay lies and time will come in the middle of the Islamic countries and a child will say the king is naked the king is naked time for honesty will come and everybody will say Muhammad the king is naked and nobody will fear him no more and these days is coming so fast and things is changing extremely fast so we are not waiting for it we are living it God is good my friend thank you for being here may the Lord bless you all and I will see you in a few hours from now at 12 p.m. Christ is Lord, Islam is false. Thank you.